In this exercise, I'm going to create a simple poster for an art show. Let's go ahead and begin by going up to File, and we'll go down to New. And what we want to do is just name our file. Let's call this Art Poster. We're going to think about how are we going to display this. Is it going to be displayed on a computer screen, or is it going to be printed out on paper and, and posted on a bulletin board? So I want to design this poster so that it is printable. So I'm going to start with the measurements here. I'm going to switch from pixels to inches and I'm going to make this an 11 by 17 size poster. Okay, Resolution, if we're going to print, has to be at least 300 pixels per inch. And then also because we're printing, we want to change our color mode from RGB, which would be appropriate if it was going to stay on the computer, if we were posting the uh, document on Facebook or some other social media. But since we're going to be printing, we're going to switch to CMYK. Now I've got everything filled in. So I'll go ahead and hit the blue button right here that says OK. Now before I start actually creating the poster, I want to think about what my intention is with the design. Okay. So this is a poster that's going to give the person that's looking at it, it's going to give them information about the art show. All right. So I want a simple design. I want high quality imagery. I want to make sure that the text is very clear. Okay. So that's the goal. All right. We want to keep things simple. Now, I don't want it to be simplistic. The words simple and simplistic have two different meanings. Something that is simple is clean and not overdone. And that's what we want. It's a poster that's going to give the viewer information about the art show. If it's simplistic, that means that it's oversimplified or lacking something important. Okay. So let's start with a background here. All right. If we choose just a flat color, I would say, well, that's probably, you know, sometimes a flat color is okay, um, but it can also be viewed as being too simplistic. So let's go to File Open, and I'm going to click on um, Documents, and then I'll go to Photoshop Projects, and then I'm going to go to Photoshop Unit 2 Exercise Files, and I'm going to open up Paint underscore Texture dot JPEG. All right, so right here I have kind of an abstract painting, with lots of different shapes and some different colors. It's quite a nice warm color palette, and it really kind of, when I found this on the internet, it really kind of, I thought it was a nice image. So I'm going to use this for my background for the art poster. So I'll go to Image, Image Rotation, and I'm going to rotate 90 degrees clockwise. That's what the CW stands for. All right. So now I'm going to take my move tool and I'll click and drag up to the art poster tab and then I'll drag down and then I'll let go of my mouse. Okay. Now you can see here that this image that I found on the internet is actually not large enough for the document that we created. Um, you want to be careful about scaling up images because if, if, you, if your image is too small and you scale it up, when you print it and you look at it, you can tell that it's been scaled up too far and it doesn't maintain the sharpness or clarity of the image. For this, we've kind of this is kind of borderline. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this down to the corner and then I'm going to scale this up. I'll press return. And I'm going to hit Command Plus. Right now, down here, you can see I'm at 16%. I'm viewing this image at 16%. So I'm going to hit Command Plus and zoom in to 100% and see what it looks like. Now, you can see here how we're losing resolution, where the image is starting to break. But I would say this is borderline, and we can probably get away with this. So I'm going to use this image because I really like it. I like the, the texture and the background here. Now, the next thing we need to do now that we've chosen this kind of background is we need to kind of tone this down because it's pretty busy and we want to be able to make sure that we can read our text 
on this poster. So I'm going to create a new layer right here. And I'm going to take my color picker right over here. And I'm going to choose one of the colors from the background image here. So I'm going to choose this orange color. Okay, so you can see it's now showing up over here um, as the selected color. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to my gradient tool. So you might be set to uh, the paint bucket, or it might already be set to gradient, but we want the gradient tool. And up here, we want to make sure that if, you've, if you're set to this gradient, which is two different colors, we want to set to the second option, which is a color that goes to, to transparency. So we're going from one color to nothing. All right, just trans, um, just clear, a clear image. So I'm going to click on this to select it. And then you have different options for your gradient. Um, this is a linear gradient and this is a radial gradient. You want to make sure that you're using the radial gradient for this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here and drag up. And here we can see now we've kind of swallowed up a lot of this image. So I'm going to hit Command Z to undo and I'm going to do a larger line. So now you can see more of that background image. So it's all about just trying to figure out exactly how much you want to cover up. Again, that's too much, so I'll go a little bit higher here. And I think that will be good. We can always do this again if we need to. If we have just that straight, flat orange color, it's a little bit too simplistic. But adding this texture here is going to kind of make the image a little bit more vibrant, a little bit more interesting without kind of going too far and swallowing up the text and the, and the purpose of the poster. Okay, let's go up to File and let's click on Open. And I want you to open up example1.jpg. Now, it's important to think about what type of imagery you're going to put for the focal point of the poster, okay? So if it's an art show, you know, you have the option of showing some of the art that will be displayed in the actual art show, or you can do something that would represent uh, the event, uh, something symbolic. And so I thought it would be good to, in because I want to keep the poster, I want to keep the design simple, I'm just going to take uh, a brush palette and use that as the symbol for the art show because that's kind of a universal symbol for art. You have a, a few brushes and some color on the palette, okay? So when you're looking for the images, first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you are looking for large images, right? Because we're working with a very large poster size. So you want to be searching for images that are very large. And then you also want to think about the overall quality of the images, OK? So if you look at this um, image right here in quadrant uh, one, what we have is an image that is simplistic. Not enough detail is in this drawing or painting. And it doesn't look very good. Okay. Now over here we've got an actual photograph of a brush and a palette. However, the angle and the color is not very good. So this, the camera is looking straight down at the palette and the uh, brush here, and the colors are just not very vibrant. It's just not very interesting. Now over here we've got a lot of vibrant color, and it is interesting, but it's a little bit too busy. There's almost too much going on here. And the other problem that we have is that uh, this is a close-up, and there's a very sharp border here, and the, and the border of this image doesn't outline anything in particular. It seems like the image would continue past the part where the photographer cropped the image. So it would be hard to take this image and make it blend in with our art poster here. It would feel like it was a separate image. And what we want to do is we want to create something that's cohesive. So for that reason, number four is our best choice. Because what we can do is we can cut out this uh, shape uh, this element right here from the white of the rest of the image, we can cut that out and it will fit quite nicely on our poster. So I'm going to close this 
and let's go up to file open and I'm gonna open up palette.png all right so uh, for this process I'm gonna use my uh, Wacom tablet and pen uh, if you don't have a Wacom tablet you can uh, certainly use a mouse but I prefer to use the pen when I'm using uh, this particular tool over here that's really great for cutting out images and that is the pen tool so I'll select the pen tool and I'm just gonna start over here and work my way around the palette and then around the brushes here okay so I'll start right here click and let go and then I'm gonna go uh, a good good distance right here I'll click here and I'm gonna drag a little bit I wanna drag and bring that out okay now I'm not gonna go all the way out because that's gonna give me a really long handle there and I'm gonna be editing this um, selection later so it doesn't look quite right here but we're gonna come back to that so I'm gonna go another good chunk of distance here and I'm clicking and dragging to create this line now remember you don't want to leave white space if it's better to cut off part of the actual element that you're that you're pulling than to leave white space you want to cut off part of it rather than add extra um, pixels onto there all right, so I'm going to, again, jump quite a distance here, and I'll just pull this out. You can see this is uh, cutting off part of the uh, side of the palette here. That's okay. I'm just kind of getting the lay of the land here, and I will be making an adjustment, like I said before, to uh, my selection here. So... I'm going to click and let go right here because right here I want a straight line. So I'll click and let go here. And then I'm going to click and drag here to have a little curve. I'll click here, click and drag here. And then the last one, I'll click and let go. All right. So now I can go in and start to edit this stuff. So I'm going to hit Command Plus and zoom in a little bit hold down the space bar and drag this so I actually want to move this point up a little bit so I'm gonna hold down the command key on the keyboard and then I'm gonna select just that point I'm continuing to hold down the command key and I'll just move this up I want to get a little bit of this white highlight I don't want to cut off the uh, the brush handle there alright and I'm gonna continue over here so I'm gonna click and drag to select the point right here again you need to um, you need to have the command key pressed down when you select it. Notice how when you hold down the command key, your cursor changes. All right, so I'm going to select it. I'm continuing to hold down the command key. I'm going to push this point up. I'm actually going to drag it in a little bit. There we go. All right, um, I'm going to take this point right here, select it, and move it up a little bit. And I'm going to take both of these points and move them over a tiny bit. Take this point, move it in. Okay. So now let's start to edit these uh, points, the curves here. So I'm going to hold down the Option key and I'm going to click and drag right here. All right, so now I've got this handle here. And continue to hold down the Option key, and notice how your cursor changes right here. I'm going to hold down Option, click on this, and drag up. Straighten that line back out. Okay. And now I'll take this handle, and I'll push this over, and try and line it up with the curve that's right here. Okay. This handle right here, I think this point, I'm going to hold down the command key, select it, and drag it down a little bit. All 
uh, this point right here, I'm going to select it first. And let's see, I'm going to hold down the Option key, click and drag, and I want to redo this curve. Okay, so I'm going to now hold down the Option key and pull this handle out a little bit further. Okay, and right in here, I'll hold down the Option key, click and drag, and I'm going to kind of redo this. And so let's see, hold down option, I'll click and drag right here, and reset that side, and then I'll change this curve right here. Okay, so I'm pretty satisfied with the, my pen outline right here. So now what I'm going to do is right click and go to make selection. I'll use the um, default settings right here. And then down here in the corner, I'm going to click on this button right here, and I'm going to create a mask. All right. So I'll hit Command minus to zoom out. And you can kind of see the quality of the cutout right here. Okay. Right in here, I want to cut this section out. So what I'm going to do is take my magic wand tool and I'm going to select um, right in here, hold down shift. I'm going to continue to select this area until I get kind of the whole area here. And then if you look at the uh, layer mask right here, anything that's black will become transparent. So what we want to do is we want to fill this with black. So I've got black selected as the uh, top color right here. I'll go to my paint bucket tool right here and I'm just going to fill this in and now I can hit command D to deselect and there we have the hole in the palette right there. So I'll hit command minus and looking at my cutout I don't want to make any edits to it so I'm going to right click over here in the layer editor and I'm going to go to apply a layer mask. Okay, so now I'll take my move tool, I'll select this, I'll click and drag, go up to the art poster, click and drag down, and here is our brush palette removed from the white background. I'm going to hit Command T, I'm going to make this a little bit larger, I'm holding down the shift key to keep the proportions correct, and then I'll press return when I'm done. Okay, we've kind of done the heavy lifting here. We've got this cut out placed and now all we need to do is add in our text. I'll take my text tool and I'm going to create um, a window here for my text and what we have to do is we have to think about the type of font that you want to use for this particular project um, and you've got all kinds of fonts um, installed on your computer, but you want to think specifically about you know, what would be appropriate for an art show. And I'm looking at this brush palette here, and so I'm thinking something that looked like it was painted with a brush would be very appropriate. Um, you wouldn't, for example, want to do something that looked like science fiction. So if I chose Coalition right here, um, this is a custom font, so it may not be on your computer. I type in art show. This is absolutely the wrong type of font because it looks like it's from a science fiction movie. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to go to um, our fonts up here, or we can go to the internet and you can go to a website that has free fonts like defont.com and you can start to search for different types of fonts. So for example, 
um, I'll look under the categories here and under scripts there's calligraphy school handwritten and here's a category for brush so you can click on this and you can look at different types of fonts so like something like this TT masters that might look good I don't really like the spacing it's a little space a little bit too far apart something like this you know it's a little bit too wild so we want it to be readable and I want to not only use this for the title of the poster but also for the rest of the poster so it has to be really readable okay so you can look through this stuff and there's many pages of these free fonts you can see right here art brush that's not bad but I actually have a font in mind and it's under the uh, cartoon um, heading it's called Comica Axis okay you can see right here this is the font that I want to use for the poster okay it does have a brush like feeling but also the letters are close together and it's very easy to read so that's why I've chosen this font okay so I would just click on the download button right here and then it's asking me where do you want to save it to or you want to open it or save it I'll just hit save and then you can open up a finder window and if you go to your downloads folder you can see right here here's comic access so you would double click on that zip folder and it opens it up into and unpacks the files into a regular folder and then what you'd do is you'd open up this file the .ttf file that's the font file you open that up and then you click on install font okay just click right there and then it will install now I already have this font installed so what I want to do is just choose it from my drop down here Comic Axis. Okay. So I'm going to type in Art Show right here. And this is not large enough, so I'll select the text and uh, go up here to my text window. I'm going to change this to 140. It's a little bit too large, so let's try a different number like 120. That looks pretty good. Let's do 120. Now, how do you keep this text in the center? The key is. Um, when you're looking at your text window you want to make sure that the text window hits the edge of your document and that way if you have your text set to center online you'll know that your text is always in the center alright so I'm gonna switch to my move tool we've got our title here and I'm gonna add a new text um, layer right here and up here I'll put in the name of our school and but we've got to change the font size here. We've got to go back down to something like maybe 36. Yeah, there, that will look good. Oakland Text Art Show. All right, so I'll go to my Move tool, and then I'm going to use the arrows to move this down because I want it closer to the title here. All right, let's add a new layer, a new text layer. Again, I'm going to go to the edges of the document and down here uh, let's go a little bit larger let's go to 48 point and this is we'll put in the date May 13th to June 3rd okay now let's put a little bit more information down here towards the bottom now it's important that your text does not go all the way to the edge you want to leave a little buffer a little margin on the sides here all right, so for this, I'm going to go to 36 point, and right here, we're going to give a little more information about the show. And then I'll switch to my move tool. I'll click on the uh, text tool one more time. And at the bottom here, we'll put in 2, 5, 30. So the reason that I created all these different layers is that I want to be able to easily take one of these layers and I want to be able to move it up or down independently 
I don't want all the text on one layer because then it all moves together and just a lot easier if you need to make an adjustment if you have it on different layers. So let's say we want to take our brush palette here and move that up. We can do that. So you can see here. Um, take a look at the difference between the two posters without the gradient. You can still read this stuff, but it's a little bit harder to read and it's much more clear with the gradient. Okay, we still have our interesting background. It just doesn't overpower the image. Okay, so we've got our simple design, but it's not simplistic. We've chosen a high quality image right here to add interest. We have a nice uh, background. Uh, color scheme with texture um, and then we have very clear easy to read text and our font matches the theme of the poster and the show that we're advertising. Make sure that you save one copy of this poster to your computer and then send a second copy of this poster to the Dropbox for credit.